So I would like to today um, welcome Shane from Brand Watch, who is also in Brighton with me, but not actually in the room with me because I'm in East Brighton in Salt Dean. He's over in the posh part of um, Hove. Um, so Shane, would you like to introduce yourself to the rest of the group and then we'll go round? Yeah, of course. Um, so my name's Shane. I work at Brandwatch as a consultant for our um, our new and prospective partners who we work on projects with. Um, so my job is basically to go and meet and understand businesses' requirements and research um, goals and understand how we can use digital research methodologies to answer those questions and solve those problems. Thank you. Liam? I'm Liam Henderson. Um, I work with Johanna running the Rail Innovation Group and I'm in London and uh, I'm also a railway consultant during the day. Nick Code. Hi, yeah, no, I'm a consultant, lots of experience in rail and, and other sectors um, and interested in innovation around sort of Internet of Things, um, uh, lights, new sensors, um, that kind of thing. And also growing a rather impressive beard. I am, thank you. And my <laughs> lockdown beard, not as big as others, but um, getting there. Ray? Um, yeah, I'm Ray Chapman. I run a boutique consultancy. I'm based in Wandsworth in London. I've been in the transport sector um, for 33 years. Um, my interest is hearing about innovation um, and transport. One of my particular projects actually is in the, the South Coast. Um, near Joanna in New Haven, um, although you're Salt Dean, but but just along the coast there, around connecting the south coast. I think I think when you live on the Brighton side mm. of Salt Dean, I think it's a bit of insult to say that you're near New Haven. <laughs> <laughs> well, soon it's going to be transformed, and New Haven's going to be the new Brighton. I think. Buy right. your property there now. <laughs> Thank you. Sadia? Yes, I, I'm muting myself due to having a sudden coughing fit. So uh, Sadia Nujat, uh, working as a consultant, uh, relatively recent was uh, head of innovation at Avanti and, uh, you know, very interested in all things uh, innovation and transport. And Nick Code, nice to see you again. Hi, yeah, no, I <laughs> recognised you. <laughs> David Watts? Hi, uh, David Watts from CCD. Uh, we're a human-centred design practice in London. Um, so doing um, service design, a lot of behaviour-based stuff, wayfinding um, across travel, transport and various other sectors. Hayden. Afternoon, Hayden Sutherland, uh, Chair of Open Transport, the only interoperability standard like the uh, Open Banking for Transport and Mobility. Tom McLaughlin. Hi, uh, Tom McLaughlin, first group. I'm currently uh, working with Avanti West Coast on business recovery activity coming out of this crisis. This is from my uh, flat in North. Marcus, who seems to have gone into school school mode with his son. Marcus Mayers. Um, Director of RAFSIC, doing some interesting things with AI um, in uh, in uh, trains. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm gonna. I, I'm not, I'm presuming this is D Ava or Dava. Hi. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't realise it would uh, come up with my username. Um, I'm Dave Roberts, um, ACT Fujitsu Company, part of the Fujitsu family. Um, offering digital business solutions in, in transport. So interested in innovation and, and, and the way forward post what's happening currently. Excellent. So you obviously got the invite through Wendy. Uh, yes. Yes. yes thank you. Um, Maisie. Hi, so I'm Maisie Bowes. I'm a customer strategy exec working at East West Rail, delivering a railway from Oxford to Cambridge. Welcome. Ben Jones. Hello, I'm Business Development Manager for SMB UK um, and Ireland uh, now. Um, met some of you previously in a world before COVID and hope to meet you again. You're not in Brighton, are you? It's your boss that lives I, in Brighton. My boss lives in Brighton, yes. <laughs> I live in Surrey. So. 
<laughs> and where did I get to? Because everything, as I let more people on, it sort of like, you know, alters the, the order of things. A. Marshall. Hi, good afternoon. Andrew Marshall. I work for a software company called OpenText in their transport sector. Um, and OpenText is involved in software solutions, enterprise content management, Internet of Things, analytics and stuff like that. Um, thank you. Sahail? Um, hi everyone, um, Sahail Uller, been a part of the innovation team uh, within my company for quite a few years. Work with Liam, well I've been a uh, part of the uh, Red Innovation Group for about a year and a half now, maybe two years now, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, currently with uh, Network Rail on the Digital Rail program, looking at bringing innovation to the DR world. And um, Giles, who I haven't seen for ages. Yeah, so I'll demute myself and put my camera on. So again, I'm Giles Bailey I'm in London as well. Uh, I'm part of the, one of the directors at the Travel Spirit Foundation, looking at open thinking and open sourcing in transport in the UK and more widely around the world. But I'm also an independent consultant. So always keen to see what the Real Innovation Group is doing. Hello, Janet. Joanna. Good, to see, Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, who I haven't seen for ages either. Yeah, hi, Joanna. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm Pablo Garcia, I'm product manager at McLaren Applied, and uh, previously I worked as innovation manager at HS2, among other things. Thank you. Richard Clay? Hi, uh, Richard Clay, um, I'm head of um, business development for Bellio Transport Group. Excellent, welcome. Sarah? Hi, I don't know. Hi, <laughs> sorry, hey. technical difficulties. Um, I'm Sarah and I work as a product development manager at Eurostar. I'm like Pablo, I also used to work at HST. Um, Hamza? Hi, um, I, I, I'm a uh, sales rep from Brandwatch. I, I work with Shane, I'm just here to shadow and learn. Oh, welcome. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. And Ashley. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, Ashley Gray, Loughborough University London. I'm the Collaborative Innovation Programme Manager in, on the London campus. Good to see you. Right, okay, so I think that's everybody. So I'm going to hand over controls to Shane, who's going to, to do a, an interesting session with us, I think, today. I hope, I hope so. Um, so just to frame what we're looking at, what I didn't want to do is have lots of slides um, to start with and go straight into looking at the technology itself. So just to quickly frame what we're going to take a look at. Um, the goal of the, the insights that we gather for any one of our clients across agencies, across brands, um, is essentially to provide, to provide data that leads to more informed and consumer centric decision making. So for example, when it comes to product development, we will um, introduce a company to what uh, is the conversation online around this product, what's driving positive or negative sentiment. We'll ask the country survey questions around their, how they use a, a product, for example, and understand exactly what should be tweaked and changed about that. Uh, when it comes to informing a content strategy for social media, we'll have a look into things like, within our industry, who are the brands who are the most uh, popular, um, the, the, the most associated with this category? Who are the biggest, most influential authors talking around this? What are the upcoming trends within this industry that we should be talking around and creating content around? So we're essentially using digital research methodologies to understand what consumer thoughts are around any brand, any um, industry, any product, any person, even to bring the voice of the consumer in the heart of our clients' organizations. So the two aspects of that that we're going to look at today are, uh, firstly, we're looking at something which is called Brandwatch Curiously. So that's our global surveying platform. So that's kind of prompted insights. When you're, when you're prompted and asked the question, what does the world or any particular country we're looking to target? Um, sorry, just reading that in the chat. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, or any 
um, any country that we're looking to target think when we ask them a particular question um, and asking kind of questions at really huge scale to survey responses globally. The second part is the Brandwatch consumer research platform and that's from the unprompted side actually looking at organic online conversation so actually scanning the entirety of the, the public internet and understanding what are people talking about when it comes to um, any particular topic and in this instance we're going to be using the topic of rail fares and looking at what the uk has to say about that particular topic of conversation which hopefully is pertinent to uh, many people on on this call in the in the industry so <clears throat> With regards to that first point then, the digital surveying, one thing that I mentioned in the description, if I share my screen now, if um, someone could just pop themselves off mute and just let me know if you can see that now. Yeah, yeah I can see it. My shared screen, perfect. <clears throat> so before we have, so firstly, we're gonna look at the prompted surveying side of things. And secondly, we'll have a look at the organic online conversation tracking. Um, so one thing that I mentioned in my, um, in the description was that I'll be asking the group actually, if there's any particular multiple choice question that you'd actually like to ask the UK. Um, when I was speaking with Johanna last time, uh, this is the question we asked here. How confident are you in getting the train? So we can actually have a look now that res the results are in. Uh, with 38 respondents, 49% saying not at all, and we can see where these answers are populated uh, across the country. Uh, more recently, I asked the UK what their favourite sausage is, uh, with Cumberland uh, out there in front, particularly popular in Manchester, as we can see. Um, so what I'd like to do, I don't know if any of you have had thoughts around this, um, if there's a particular question that you'd like to, in real time, serve to the UK to find out what do they think about any topic related to, to, to the railway. Are you asking for a question now? Yeah. If anyone wants to have input or just to ask something, I'm happy to come up with something myself, but I think it's I quite- I was gonna quite say, it's great here. That, that question that says, because um, when do you think you will use a train next? Because I'm in London and I'm using my car to get around because I've been advised by our wonderful mayor um, <laughs> that we should, you know, get on our bikes. But my bike is in the repair for six weeks at Halfords in Wimbledon. So I'm hoping to get that back soon. But I'm actually driving on journeys that I haven't driven in in decades into central London. So, you know, when will you next get on a train? I think probably... I'm on Southwestern, so, you know, I see these trains running up and down, but, you know, I'm following government policy, so, mm. I was going to say exactly the same thing as going to tell a Londoner, uh, trying to get a sense of when do you think your next journey on the train will be? All right, so let's go with this month in the year, um, uh, or one year plus. Like so. So when will you next get the train? We've got three options this month in the year or one year plus. And we'll ask that to the UK. So <clears throat> what I'll do is I will hit to ask the question and start. So <clears throat> to talk a little bit about what we're actually doing here, um, I'm sure probably everyone on the on the call has uh, a smartphone. So we're actually buying app ad space. So when you're on an application such as the weather app, you'll see a banner ad pop up at the bottom asking you to, to buy something promoting a particular brand or a product. But what we're doing is we're actually bidding for that ad space and buying it not to post an ad, but to post a survey question. So these yellow nodes you can see here are people in real time who are actually seeing this question on their mobile devices. Um, so on the left, you can see that this is kind of popping up and we've, we've, we've shown the question to 360, 70 people. And look at that, we've got one answer. Um, so that's quite popular to maybe one in every 300 or so will respond, we're not incentivizing it in any way. But we can see that in real time, these are the service questions. And in Gloucester, on this little green node here, we can see our first respondent. 
who is on an Apple iPhone 11 and have said that they are likely to get the train the next time uh, more than a year away from now. So <clears throat> we're up to 700 people who have been asked the question now, just the one response so far. But we'll essentially start to see this histogram populating on the left hand side with the responses and that the UK are giving. Once we've run the questionnaire and left that running for a few hours, what we'll have is a nice uh, volume of data to be able to do some analysis of. And then you can, of course, start to segment that and find out, for example, which are the regions who are considering themselves to be least likely to get the train soon. And the kind of thing that that could, of course, inform is when should we next be ramping up our service, timetable, uh, decision making, um, messaging, even follow up questions as to why would you be worried about this? Is it because you don't want to wear a face mask? Is it because um, of uh, you know, other multiple choice options as well? Um, here we go. This month is making a comeback and has now taken the lead um, above one year plus uh, with individuals in the south east here and in peterborough um stating that they're likely to get the train within a month <clears throat> so we'll leave that running we can come back to that and um maybe over the next half hour or so understand what the um once we've got a higher volume of respondents what the country thinks there we go one year has got another response now as well but hopefully that's started a few of you thinking that yes this is an interesting question to ask but about the questions that you or your clients may like to to ask um, in order to gain critical business insights to kind of make uh, good decisions which are based on consumer opinion. We'll come back to that in a moment. There we go, in the year has got uh, one answer to you now. <clears throat> so that's the first aspect that I wanted to look at, which is the prompted uh, thoughts and opinions of the United Kingdom. The second aspect is on the organic side. So actually in this instance what I've done is I've actually just written a keyword search for any conversation where somebody mentions the railway and the term fair and taking a look at all of the conversation that goes on organically online regarding this particular topic but again similarly to the last instance hopefully this starts to get you thinking about what conversation topic or brand would I like to understand what the country talk, talks about in a similar way so when it comes to this rail fare conversation, I'm looking at things such as how many mentions have there been? And in this instance, we're looking over the course of 2020 uh, so far, 34,000 mentions we've got, we've gathered. <clears throat> I'm looking at how has this conversation developed over time? I'm looking at what kind of things are driving conversation around rail fares. Now, what we like to do is overlay some intelligence on top of this to make sure that you can not just look at this data and see a bunch of words and a squiggly line and think, well, so what? So that you can actually get to the, 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 the stories and the insights and the interesting moments and, and developments within this conversation. So <clears throat> some examples of that are obviously we can click through all of this data when we see any point here, like January the 22nd, we see a, um, a peak in conversation. And we're able to, so if I just refresh this data, it's been a while since I clicked on it. <clears throat> we're able to click through and see all of the verbatim posts which are making up any data point that we're observing in the platform. What we can also do is apply some artificial intelligence to this um, conversation over time to actually carry out peak identification and now we're not only using that to identify where the most significant peaks in conversation have been, but actually all of the key drivers of those as well. So uh, I'm sure some of you are already thinking about theories as to what it was on January the 2nd, which drove that uh, huge spike where conversation was 20,412% higher than uh, it typically would be. <clears throat> and we can see here by clicking into this that that was driven by three, the, 3,732 mentions sharing a link from the bbc.co.uk. So that's this particular story here breaking. And we're understanding now that that big moment there, the biggest spike across this year was driven by thousands of shares of this particular article on the BBC, mentioning that rail fares were going to be rising by 2.7%. Was a really big driver of that. Uh, 2,616 retweets of this tweet 
Meanwhile, in Germany, rail fares have been cut by 10% to encourage more people to travel by train. So contrasting the decision making within the UK um, and the rail fare price compares to um, a country which seems to be being idealized, which is Germany's um, rail, rail system we're seeing in the conversation there. <clears throat> But point A wasn't the only interesting moment and the only big spike in conversation. We can start to explore lots more of these and see B, for example, uh, was driven by um, something a bit more positive. A new veterans rail card helping hundreds of thousands of former personnel save on rail fares and um, going to improve access to jobs, keep former service people in touch with family uh, and friends, which is actually a little bit more of a, a positive uh, take on the, com on the conversation around rail fares, driving that. Uh, be the second peak in conversation there. But as you can see, there's lots, lots more insight that we can gather by scrolling through there and understanding exactly what went on during the rest of all of these peak moments uh, in, in the UK. <clears throat> can also see Germany popping up uh, again here. And again, similarly to any point that we're looking at, these are all clickable. So we can see Germany, um, actually, the UK is okay because railway fares are so expensive. Germany's rail network seems great though. So this is another context, uh, Belgium, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden. Um, so we're seeing these other countries where the UK is kind of taking a look at those countries and thinking, um, why don't we have a rail, rail fares more similarly to Germany's for, for, for example, seems to be a perception which is held by lots of people in the UK uh, throughout this year. And we've seen that pop up uh, twice now or, already actually. Um, so again, similarly to the AI that we're applying to that last visualization, we can start to apply intelligence to the topics too and say, for example, um, I'm looking to inform my social media strategy. So I want to understand the emoji language that uh, people are using here, for example, with a big face palm in the middle <laughs> there, unfortunately. Um, I want to understand the hashtag language, um, for example, that's driving conversation. <clears throat> um, or the people or the phrases or the organizations involved in this conversation um, and then start to color code this by various things as well so for example look for the more negative the more um, female or male centric topics or the more negative or positive topics veterans rail card there with some positivity climate emergency with some negativity so Looking at this positivity and negativity, the next thing that kind of inspired me to do was explore sentiment in the conversation a little bit more. And rather than just looking at overall kind of topics, driving lots of volume um, or overall keywords, actually see what's driving positivity and uh, the negativity in this conversation. So the first thing that I did here to start exploring this was to actually have a look month on month at the relative growth of positivity and negativity within the conversation around rail fares. And actually that gives us some data um, which demonstrates quite a kind of steady increase of negative sentiment in the conversation spanning from January where we see 23% up to um, June where we see negativity uh, com comprising about 50% um, of the conversation around rail fares. So I thought that's interesting. Let's try and explore that a little bit more and actually break down where exactly is this negativity coming from? So here, rather than breaking down by months and looking for the most negative month, I've actually broken down by regions in the UK and we're starting to get a little bit more granular here. Um, broken down by regions in the UK to identify, for example, that uh, the Highland and Islands um, in the UK is the most negative region, uh, Northern Ireland, the most positive region. Again, we can click into all of this and actually have a scroll through and see that much of this positive sentiment in Northern Ireland seems to be driven by uh, an action uh, where the minister has given a prompt to reply um, and this is a particular customer expressing extreme uh, gratitude <clears throat> um, operating for, for the operations during the COVID-19 crisis offering financial uh, assistance. So a specific action leading to some positive sentiment within a particular region. Um, 
whilst the Highlands and Islands has a lot of negativity, it's quite um, a small volume of conversation overall. The southeast, uh, a very negative region again, with lots, lots more, uh, with lots of ne lo lots of negativity as well this year. <laughs> so, what that's spurred me on to do was actually see why is it that the southeast talks so negatively. So I had a look here into the topics driving that negativity in the southeast. So a topics wheel just for the focused on the southeast, which is being driven by people saying it's expensive, the service. Uh, the Conservative Party, uh, again, German, <laughs> Germany popping up, um, again, color-coding this by sentiment to uh, outline exactly what those topics are in the Southeast, which are driving negativity, such as um, poor service, uh, London's King Cross. So we can click on that and see why that is actually a protest at London's King's Cross, people making a stand against uh, rail fare price incre increases. Uh, Northern Rail as well, driving uh, quite a lot of negativity. The failures of privatisation don't stop at Northern Rail. So from kind of identifying just that big bar of negativity, we're then able to just dive into that in a lot of detail to then explore where is that negativity coming from and have a look at the southeast and then dive into that a bit more and say what are the southeast saying and what parts of that are positive and negative to really get kind of under... Um, the cause of uh, particularly interesting points in the data set that we're noticing. Um, but thankfully not all positive and we can see the, uh, all, all negative, sorry, and we can see the Armistice Day Fairs for Veterans and Veterans Rail Card actually counteracting that with a, a little bit of um, positivity in the conversation as well. The final thing I looked at was just a few of the hashtags in this conversation around the climate emergency, Tory Britain and the veterans rail card. Um, and actually identifying that the climate emergency and veterans rail card are two of those really, really big and prominent conversations. And just looking down into some of the influencers who are responsible for that kind of uh, huge reach of these conversations and see within the climate emergency conversation in rail fairs, who are those authors which are really driving this forward um, who would be good to have on side. And similarly with Veterans Rail Cards, who are the authors who have really amplified the message um, behind this uh, announcement and are responsible for it getting such huge um, publicity in the UK across this year. So those are just kind of two avenues that I decided to explore within rail fairs, exploring some of the hashtags and the authors and the trends around those, exploring the change in uh, sentiment um, right down to individual regions and what's driving those. But um, hopefully you, that's inspired you to think of a few other questions which you may like to ask of the rail fare conversation or indeed of any other uh, conversation that the UK is already engaging in um, with thousands of conversations about what they think and have experienced organically uh, this year. <clears throat> so what we'll do is just lastly uh, take a look back and see what the uh, update is on the survey from that prompted insight side of things. And we can see that one year plus seems to be running away with it uh, a little there um, with 40% of the overall conversation. <coughs> Perhaps um, up north, we seem to see seeing quite exclusively uh, green until we get actually uh, Leeds is the first, per is the first region to, to mention a response, anything other than one year plus. So perhaps more of a northern trend and people are uh, less willing to catch the train within a year is what we could conclude from that. But we could, of course, start to separate that and ask some further questions of any regions to come to some more um, categoric conclusions there, certainly. So those were the two aspects of the conversational analysis that I wanted to, to look at. Um, and like I say, as much as showing you something interesting um, today, which is one of the goals, um, hopefully that's inspired you to think about what the applications might be and the specific questions that you'd like to ask using either methodology um, to yeah, just bring digital consumer opinions more central to um, informing campaign or product or timetable or any other kind of decision making um, within yours or your clients' businesses. It would be really great just to um, open up to some questions or some uh, feedback um, on anything that we've, we've looked at um, over, over the last half hour.
so um so either if anyone's got any questions please feel free to unmute yourself and sort of like um bring up some ideas for questions or type something in the chat box so that as as ever so that i can see them and perhaps we can raise them as questions so could i uh, can i start then if that's all right um if you must <laughs> thank you much for that and it was wonderful to see real time sentiment uh I never realised that those questions that I get served as adverts were actually from a survey company. I thought they were like a company that was trying to make you go to their website. Mm -hmm. um, how representative are the, the, the responses you get? Uh, significantly more than any traditional research methodology. Um, one, of the, one of the key questions we often ask when kind of proposing the uh, Curiously methodology um, is to, to ask a room of people just to put their hands up if they're uh, part of a panel or if they've attended a survey in the last two years and inevitably uh, almost no one puts their hand up and then ask the second question how many of you own a smartphone and everybody puts their hand up so in terms of the representativeness of the sample you don't kind of suffer from those skews of for example people who are in uh, difficult financial situations looking to who have Googled how to make money online and seen that they can be part of a panel, for example, who tend to be uh, either quite young people, students, or quite elderly um, people who are out of employment. Um, and also in terms of reliability of the results, because there is absolutely no incentive incentive uh, to what to these people, there's no kind of um, that we're not willing people in any way just to click through and get through the answers as quickly as possible. They're actually kind of more authentic based on the lack of incentivization. We've got a couple of case studies actually on, uh, for example, being the only um, market research firm to correctly uh, anticipate a leave vote in the UK, as well as correctly anticipating the 2016 swing states in the Donald Trump uh, election in 2016. Um, which give really nice data as to the reliability and representativeness of the of the data, which I'd be I'd be happy to share those those links with you. So, what's your prediction for this year's election then? <laughs> I don't think we've done one. Yet, but it, it definitely will be something. Because <laughs> I think there's so so much difficulty in predicting this one. It's probably worse than the 2016 one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, something we will be running. So watch this watch this space. Can Do you I have somebody? follow-up question? Yeah. I can follow very much following on uh, Liam's, Liam's question. And again, yeah. very, very interesting presentation. But, but do you, how do you check demographics? I.e., are they older or younger or th those kinds of issues in the database of the responses? Yeah, so when it comes to demographic analysis, there's some simple um, things which are associated with the user based off of the, um, I believe it's the application that they're using. Um, we, we occasionally will make an assumption about the individual. Um, but most typically when it comes to wanting to identify specific demographic groups, that would just form part of the questionnaire itself. So as one of the, um, for example, 15 questions that we'd ask someone, we may ask them 10 questions around the rail industry, but we may ask five questions about who they are as well, which can allow you to do more interesting segmentation and make conclusions as to the geographic or um, demographic disparities between opinions of specific groups of, of people. So most typically, it would just be a case of asking uh, a question, how old are you or are you a parent and so on would form part of the survey. Does that make sense? Does, does anyone have a question they'd like to answer, ask on the survey that might, might help them with, with something that um, would give them some consumer insight at the moment? I have one. So, I, so what we do is we do ticket machines for railways. So it would be a good question to ask in the near future, when they start traveling again, would they buy through a ticket machine? Or I don't, you know, I don't know which media they would be looking at because we're obviously trying to shift, you know, thinking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that would be very valuable for us actually <laughs> to learn. 
yeah if i could so if i what i'll do is i'll post that in the same way as i've asked that previous question and i'll be able to send out the response rate that we get um later on later on today um would you buy through so is that just trying to understand would you if i'm putting that in as a multiple choice question yeah um, the, the government the government is saying everybody to buy tickets online or through your phone or and, and we have a, a fleet of three thousand tvms uk wide you know so they're metal boxes in the ground they're quite uh Mm -hmm. quite good real estate shall we say um it'd be very good to understand um if people will go back if, if you know there's many questions i'll ask you know cleaning measures you know if they were all up to date you know everybody's putting their shall i say propaganda out um but never but nevertheless it, it could be a safe world um yeah. but be very good for us to, to to see how quickly do we need to move um because if people say yeah 90 percent people will go back to, to the normal before mm -hmm. we may need to move slightly slower but believe me i'm pushing harder than <laughs> uh than i need to at the moment so um yeah it'd be very very good insight yeah definitely so i'll be able to send that over just as a a follow-up if um johanna or if you could post your email just in the in the chat yeah. um, then i can send that over as a follow-up but also it could potentially be interesting just to have a conversation with you about maybe what a more in-depth survey could look like to try and identify what regions are most likely to do this and where we should be um, making sure that those ticket machines do still exist, don't still exist, and just having that data to inform um, that. Absolutely. No, that's great. Thank you. Awesome. I had a question, uh, another one, if I, if I may. Um, so I was on a call yesterday with um, Ria and there was a the knowledge transfer network and I, i'm guessing the tox which is abelio somebody from abelio richards on the call and also sarah from eurostar i really thought the question of the tox and the train operating companies would be asking it, from the question that we've just asked uh, nationally how are we going to attract people back onto the train network um because some research I've been doing in another sector suggests that people are going to just drive. In fact, people are thinking of driving to Italy and Spain for their holidays this year rather than getting on the plane. Mm -hmm. So would it not be right to, well, just a suggestion to put it out there, to be asking people if they knew that there was a train coming down the track which had capacity on it, you know, 20% uh, or whatever it is, yeah. um, that, 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 you know, I'm safe to go and board the, you know, 12.47 from Ellsfield to Woking or London Waterloo. You know, so I know that actually I don't need to drive my car or uh, walk to Vauxhall to get a Santander bike, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah, because mm, I, I always thought, yeah, could, could you do that on your research for the Fox? Yeah, so would the so the the kind of question i'm guessing the way that you may word that would be um how much more comfortable with getting the train would a uh app with a busy busyness indicator of some sort be i don't know if that's the exact way that you'd word it and then we'd maybe have some options to uh not at all um somewhat very very much so um and then obviously quest answers leading to the very much so option would say that that is definitely something which is worth investing in and developing because it would make a significant difference to the um, comfortableness uh, that people would feel with getting getting back to, to, to rail travel. Just to, just to respond to that as well, Ray, um, National Rail Inquiries have actually just launched last week a checker for capacity. So they're taking feeds from the tox on capacity so that you can do exactly what it is that you are describing to see how busy the train is that you're likely to catch. Um, of course, at the moment, while the government message is not to travel, we're still seeing extremely low passenger levels and the, the kind of recovery plans that the talks are preparing can't really be put into place until that government message starts to change. Yeah, the, um, the current levels of ridership in the UK are, as I understand it, between 800,000 and a million per day. Uh, and that's a return. So you've only got sort of four at best 400,000 people a day using the railway service. Yeah, and I think the, the existence of a, an application which is similar is um, a really good research opportunity because not only can you ask people prospectively about what would you think about doing this, but I would also presume that you could write 
similarly to how we did for the rail fairs into the organic online conversation, write a query um, for all mentions of the existing um, application which has been launched elsewhere and actually discover how is that being received? Are people talking about it? Are people saying that it's being useful? What problems are people um, openly discussing on Twitter or on forums, for example, um, with regards to the other entity who's done something similar to what we're, we're thinking about doing? In, in, in terms of um, your um, sentiment mapping, are you able to bring up live today what um, people are talking about if you were to just um, put in public transport? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, and what, what people are saying about it, because is that, is that a better indicator of what people are saying about it and how they're feeling about it than it is about asking survey questions? Um, the, the two methodologies often work in, in tandem with each other. And I think it often just depends on the research question that you're, you're asking. Um, is there's often a case that, for example, the first thing that you'll do is have a look at the organic conversation that's happening online. And then that may inform the right research questions to, to be asking of the country, um, for example. So... For example, if I was coming up with a railway survey, I would never have thought to ask a question around um, around maybe other countries whose rail service the people in the UK are envious of. But now I've seen that as a quite prominent topic of conversation. That may be an avenue which I would which I would then explore and see if I can validate that with the rest of the country and what they think. Um, <clears throat> Again, sometimes there's very specific questions that you want to ask. Um, for example, that one around um, people, uh, whether they're more likely to use the application or they're more likely to use the physical um, ticket. Teams. It's quite unlikely that you'd have a huge volume of people specifically going online to express that I would prefer to use an app than a ticket machine. So there's a necessity to kind of prompt that question from people, a really? specific yeah. thing to expect they're expressing. Um, so it's just a case of thinking about um, the two, the research question that you've got in mind, the, um, the decision that you're trying to make, and then understanding which of those two research methodologies would most uh, appropriately provide you with data, um, or would both most appropriately provide you with data to, to best answer that question and understand what people think. Hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, I was just curious in, into sort of like you know which was the best because, um, sort of like conscious that um, when you ask questions, you kind of lead the witness rather than organically getting to sort of like how people feel. You know, because I was thinking particularly of that question that we asked at the, the at the first um, trying to how likely you to travel by train, because yeah. what people say they're going to do and then what they go and do are two completely different things, aren't they? Mm -hmm. because um I like you'll know this more living um in Hove I mean like it, it looked as though it was the middle of the summer holidays on Saturday um along along the whole of the um Bryson Beach you know with bars open people queuing to get their beers people queuing to go to it you know nobody seemed to be worried about the the pandemic mm -hmm. and if people are feeling safe enough to take part in leisure activities does that also mean that they'll soon sh shift their judgment in how they perceive public transport mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So again, you could carry out market research and just see what people are talking about when it comes to see, uh, like you could indirectly ask a question which could inform um, what like, likelihood of going back to the rail, such as are the volumes of conversation about going to the beach as high this year uh, as they were last June the, June the 16th? Um, 17th it is today i think um and compare actually is there a big disparity in people's beach going likelihood or traveling to work likelihood and therefore indirectly make a decision that people are necessarily more comfortable with traveling because they're talking about and posting pictures about doing that more um so that could be an idea for that particular project as well just another to add to that if i may because they're, they're talking about people going to the beach um mm -hmm that opens up a whole big challenge that the government have got right now, as you'll be aware, around this quarantine piece, around people staying in the UK, and there's this possibility of staycation. But you know, you do talk to people who say, oh, well, we're planning to jump in our car and drive to Spain. So that's quite an open opportunity to, for the whole tourism sector, I would say, in the UK, whether it's Brighton, Blackpool, or Skegness, and to see if, if people are, you know, really going to holiday in the UK or are they going to, um, you know, 
drive off through the the shuttle down to down to Italy or whatever. So mm-hmm. something there may be uh, opportunity perhaps. Yeah, and I think that would be again another market research topic. Which, as I've written a query there for rail fares, you may just write a query for staycation or holiday in the UK, and lots of key terms which would be indicative of people having plans to do so. And then from discovering and being able to show data around the significant increase in volume of people expressing that as a plan this year compared to 2019 or 2018 would lead you to say, for example, our next big marketing campaign for the second half of this year should be targeted around staycations, for example, for example, because that's a, a huge trend in the country. By train. <laughs> By train. Well, I was going to say, if you, if you were, I mean, I'd say, for example, I mean, I'd say, you know, not specifically a train operator, but say rail delivery group who represents the train operators, if they were going to, because I think it was interesting that one of the peaks that you picked up in your sentiment was um, a rail card, the issue of the veterans rail card, which yeah. is a campaign that would have been led by the rail delivery group. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you know, say it got to um, middle of July when things of these and we're on to, I, I can never remember whether it's level one or level five, which way around it goes in terms of COVID alertness or whatever. But if we're now encouraging people to holiday and have their staycations and they wanted to inform their campaign, would this be a way that they would do it in order to find out what are the buzzwords and how we encourage people back onto public transport? Yeah, exactly. So there's there's use ca- there's large use cases which are which kind of um, would often start off the most simple thing that an organisation would do is just track mentions of themselves. So what do people say about network rail, for example? Um, then to make that a bit more broad, they may start to look at competitors and have a look at other brands in the industry. Um, the next thing that you would do is look at the industry itself. So, for example, it would be more beneficial for for Nike to do analytics of the entirety of the conversation around football and say, rather than how do I align myself with what people already say about us, what I should be doing is aligning myself with the language used in the football industry. What countries talk about this most? Who are the most impactful authors? What are the stories which people have um, which have gone viral over the last year? What language are people using? Um, who are the most impactful authors? I think I may have already said that. Mm, Yeah. But uh, who are the brands who are doing this well and are go-to voices within this category as well? So you've got all this data to when it comes to campaign, uh, content, decision-making, strategy, construction, you've got all this data to say, here's the language we should be using, here's who we should be targeting, here's when we should be posting this. And all of the planning that you've come up with is really, really based in data and you've got lots of credibility behind all of those recommendations. Um, And not only that, you can say that we're actually going to measure this as well. So if we've got access to the platform, we can measure the effectiveness of this campaign and how much of a voice um, our rail company has become associated uh, with conversation around staycation, for example. But that would be, yeah, that would be a really kind of good uh, strategy. I would suggest is using the industry term as the research method and then finding out how can we align our brand with that messaging and that audience. So you'd want to be sort of like looking at staycation, UK city breaks, and then maybe about people that would encourage, you know, influencers in that sector. I'm like, so you to, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just randomly going to say Kirsty Olsop because she's somebody who promotes her Devon home kind of thing. So that's the type of thing that you'd be looking to align yourself but i guess that's difficult yeah. for an industry that's fragmented across different operators yeah I'm, yeah i suppose it, it would it would be if there's not a kind of a central data source because or... i i guess in that sense that would be a big learning for you know getting people back onto rails would be who would lead a campaign like that you know because it wouldn't just be an individually led campaign it would have to come from a central organization that could promote rail in general right that's i mean that's my thought i mean like is that i mean like what's in terms of campaigning you're doing these types of things what's your thoughts on it um so uh, is it are you are you saying that it might be difficult to because there's it's so fragmented there are so many different entities to yeah. all of them kind of singing from the same hymn book so to speak in terms of aligning themselves with insights from one particular project is that is that right yeah yeah um so i mean 
it would be typical for us to work with just specific individual arms of the business would be would be some would be obviously one thing that we would be able to do um and then other than that the only thing i can can think to suggest would just be having some kind of platform whereby we would be able to um for example month on month provide a, an insights report which is either through a presentation or through a kind of uh, even even like a pdf output we could work with our analyst team to come up with a, uh, a a monthly trends piece for example which outlines various things such as the changes and trends within the rail industry and changes and trends within staycation conversation um, and actually we do if you would be interested in having a look at understanding a bit more about what that might look like as a kind of output of an insights report we are doing um, we're doing a free weekly COVID-19 um, insights report so if you just search brand watch COVID-19 you can sign up to all of our resources so um, hopefully that gives you a like for like kind of view of uh, this is what that project looks like from a COVID-19 research perspective, but then you can start to imagine more clearly what it may look like um, as an insights piece from a staycation or from a, um, a rail travel perspective. And I think that's an interesting, I mean, I, I, I've signed up to the report and I think it's really interesting because it gives you a global perspective. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think we can learn from how um, other countries are, are, are reacting to, to the global pandemic? Uh, that depends what you're trying what what you're trying to inform or the questions you'd like to ask really it's so different for it for every business so really personalization is is key yeah so like you will in uh, in in a, a typical relationship that we would have with a with a, with a, um, a client you would have direct access to the platforms which we've just taken a look at so you're actually writing your keyword searches around rail fares or around staycationing you're creating your own dashboards and you're seeing interesting topics and exploring those a little bit further and then asking follow-up questions with with surveys for example so um the customizability is really really key um, and actually having first-hand access to the platform is really really key because you're the ones who obviously understand exactly what questions that you'd like to answer exactly the decisions that you're trying to inform around physical rail machines around the what the next campaign should be around around timetable scheduling um <clears throat> which there is probably not one of our other clients who want to ask uh, the same questions so yeah the customizability and flexibility of the platform hopefully is um something which means you can get answers to all of those questions I'm conscious that we've got five minutes left of our session and uh, I've, I've dominated the questioning a bit um, but uh, um, I think it would be useful to see how our questions doing but also to see if there's anything anybody else would like to to add to the conversation. I think all of us in London have to go on mute because there's now a massive thunderstorm outside. <laughs> it does look a bit dark it's still sunny here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Liam is absolutely right. It is uh, <laughs> black hours outside. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, I'm still bathed in my sunshine loft. <laughs> All right. Not here. Can we can we see our question? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, taking bets on where the answer is going to be uh, tomorrow. Trains tomorrow. Trains <laughs> next year. Expectation or a wish. So we've got uh, one year plus. Oh, yeah. so we've uh, we've got here about uh, you know sixty or so respondents served to ten thousand people. We do for the for the real thing. This is just kind of an example demonstration. Uh, we do a much much bigger volume than that for a real project, and maybe lots more questions as well. Um, but yeah, we can see that one year plus is out there in front. Um, nobody in the north is looking to get a train within uh, within a year got someone who's oh that's quite not quite close to my house actually by the looks of it <laughs> but it is quite interesting from this so almost a third of people are planning on taking a train in the next month so they must be assuming there's going to be some change or they're people that are just going to work anyway yeah because i think part of the problem is that there's no need to go anywhere because that's what drives travel isn't it true I mean, I don't even, I mean, like I know for most of the, the lockdown, I haven't had my car, but I think I've probably gone about 40 miles in my car in the last, what was it, 95 days now, is it? 
yeah, yeah there's, there's nothing to I've, and i've not i've not been on a train but if you were to ask me how i've traveled around i've probably done quite a lot on my bicycle yeah more, more, dri more driven by the fact that the weather has been so good rather than actually any particular need uh steve has asked if you could just maybe cover off for him is do we know if they're train users uh no but we could have that in a real project we could of course have that as a as one of the questions when was the last time you got the train for example or how often did you get the train in 2019 or something like that we could think about Oh, fascinating. Great. So, um, so what I'd, it would be great just as a follow up, maybe to have um, some kind of just chain where we've got, um, so everyone's got my information. Um, as I say, just if there's other ideas for research projects, questions that you'd like to ask using either methodology, then that's exactly the kind of thing that we'd love to discuss um, as a, a, a follow up and see if we can put together a, a really strong questionnaire or research project in the platform. Um, or just understand your question, your business goals a little bit more and just make some suggestions as to how we could um, fit in. Um, Would you like to put your email in the chat or maybe say it? No. Yeah. Next one minute. <laughs> well, I've, I found that really, really interesting. So I, I was amazed that this stuff went on when, when he first presented to me because I'd already, I'd signed up for the, the, co the COVID, um, insights that you that you send out weekly which i thought was really really good it's i mean like i do encourage people to sign up to that because it does give some interesting stuff about what's going on globally and i yeah and how people are recovering and what what they're getting involved in so i think that's really good um email is in the chat obviously we'll send out when it's downloaded we'll send out the video of the webinar and as ever we'll also liam will send out um the summary of the webinar as well to to everybody in the mailchimp yes cool and All that's right. dead dead on one o'clock so thank you, you shane know. for joining us and if anybody wants to get in contact with shane say his email's there or if not email myself or liam and we'll put you in touch brilliant same Thanks time next week guys. hopefully <laughs> speak to you again soon take care bye thank bye. you very much bye bye thank you.